my name is Hallie. I work in Austin, Texas in the Google office there. And my job as a machine learning specialist customer engineer is to talk with businesses, help them figure out what business use cases they might want to delve into, and also which products on the Google Cloud Platform side would make the most sense to solve this problem, addressing business concerns as well. So um, what I hope to do today is give you an overview of the suite of products in Google Cloud Platform um, in the AI space. So this particular um, talk that I normally give to customers can be hour and a half, two hours long or longer with workshops and labs. Um, so this is meant to just be sort of a taste of the possibility on Google Cloud Platform and what we have. Some things have changed um, over the past couple of months, even since Google Next. Um, and then more things are coming. Um, we've got um, London Next coming up. So keep with that in mind, um, I'm not going to go very deep, but very broad. Um, so first, how can I make faster impact on business? Now, I know some have um, hobby projects, which are really cool. But when you want things to be funded and paid for, we have to sometimes address these things. So how do I spend less time preparing data? How do I get my models to production faster and manage its life cycle? How do I build and deploy my models flexibly? This can be on-prem, on GCP, on other clouds. Um, a lot of larger companies need to have um, this spread across multiple clouds for compliance reasons, for um, a lot of other reasons. Um, and then finally, how do I collaborate with all users? Companies often have the issue of, I'm hiring new talent. How do they get up and running fast? Or I have a data scientist. I don't want them to spend a day, two days, just trying to get their VM set up? How can they just open their laptop and be completely ready to go with all the resources they need to have? So these are all questions I help address in the field. Um, and the AI platform, we believe at Google, helps address most of these. So one is build once to deploy anywhere. So um, the AI platform supports Kubeflow. Um, if you haven't heard of Kubeflow, it's Google's open source technology to build portable AI applications that can run on-prem, on GCP, on other clouds as well, without significant code changes. Um, secondly, productionize AI applications fast. So when you are building machine learning models that are meant to be used into production that solve a particular business use case, you want to be able to deploy them into production fast and in a serverless way, allowing you to, to focus on the development of these models and the performance of these models, and not necessarily the actual operations um, of the model. Third, explain and optimize AI easily. So you are going to want to be able to explain your model to the business stakeholders. Um, I know some businesses typically like to shy away from neural networks just because linear logistic regression are much easier to explain what's happening. But we've come up with some um, unique ways to look into neural networks, to look and see how can we improve model accuracy? What exactly is it about the data that we gave the model that's causing this type of performance? And we'll look into some of those options. Um, and last, but certainly not least, is collaborate effectively. So whenever you go to start creating a machine learning model, there's really no need in starting from a complete blank slate. There is enough out there that you shouldn't be recreating the will. You should be building on top of what your colleagues have already been working on. So we'll talk about something called um, AI Hub, which if you've heard of TensorFlow Hub, similar concept. So AI platform in general is an end-to-end -end code based development environment for AI inside the Google Cloud Platform console. So AI Platform is built on Kubeflow. So this is a point where I'll stop and say that in Google, in the AI space, we give you lots and lots of options. So it can be confusing, and you feel overwhelmed with just so many choices. But we're here to help you meet you where you are. So if you want to have something where you have more control, just go straight to Kubeflow. If you want something a little more managed, start with AI Platform, which is built on Kubeflow. So you still have the capabilities, but you have a little less to worry about on the management side. Um, so there are just some things to think about when you're choosing different um, tools to use. So AI Platform is built on Kubeflow, open so which is open source. Um, this is sort of giving you that 
option to have a no vendor lock-in. You can take your models trained on AI platform um, anywhere. You can also run your models on-prem or on Google Cloud. And then you can also um, have access to things like TPUs and different accelerators for um, larger machine learning models. So this is an overall structure of the tools at Google. So at the bottom here, we have AI Hub and Kubeflow on-prem. And then one step further is all the things we've talked about for AI platform. There's data labeling capabilities. There's built-in algorithms. You can bring your own algorithms to train on AI platform. You can serve these models as well. You can even train within an AI platform hosted notebook. Or if you need very particular um, VM image that's related to deep learning, you can just open that up. Everything is already there. You're good to get going um, right away. And I think the most important piece of this is when you're talking about business use cases and actually getting it into production is its integration with all of these other pieces, like Cloud BigQuery, where you're going to have your data warehousing. Cloud Dataflow, where you're going to be transforming your data in a much larger scale for production. Cloud Data Prep, if you need sort of a, a UI for data cleansing. And then, of course, Cloud Data Proc, if you have a need for Hadoop and Spark clusters, and then Google Data Studio if you have a need for a BI dashboard. So just kind of taking that one step further is the AI platform supports the entire data scientist team. So whether you're a data engineer, we're using something like PubSub for sending messages, data flow, data prep to ingest and prepare transform data, or the data scientist. We're using AI platform notebooks to develop your machine learning model, you're training the model, you're evaluating the model, or an ML engineer, where you're actually using the predictions piece of AI platform to serve the models, or using Kubeflow pipelines to encapsulate your entire ML workflow for reuse across your team. Or the developer, say you want to incorporate AI into a application, but you just want to worry about getting the REST API. That's possible. And then the business analyst. You want to kind of um, build on what the data scientists have been doing and pull some of the models and solutions in AI Hub um, to help you get started. So we'll walk into a little bit of each of these products. So for data labeling. So let's say that you need to get high quality training data, um, but you simply don't have the manpower to sit down and label all of this data. At Google, we have um, some resources that help you label the data. This is particularly important for even AutoML use cases. I know before they were talking about AutoML. In AutoML, customers usually say, great, this is awesome. I don't have to write model code. But then they're like, wait, you need data. How do we get this data? <laughs> and they sort of look at each other as like, who's going to be the one to say, I'll label the data? Um, but we have services to help you with that. And, and we're building on these as well to make this more of a um, smart process. I can't say more. Um, oh, little pictures. Um, so these are three more pieces. So deep learning VM, I mentioned that before. So you essentially can take a VM that already has everything set up for you to get started with deep learning um, model development, including your accelerators, all your framework packages. Um, and then if you want to take that one step further, AI Platform Notebooks uses this deep learning VM in the background. So again, options. You want to use the deep learning VM, but you don't want to use AI Platform Notebooks for whatever reason, fine. But if you want to manage a little less, use our AI Platform Notebooks that automatically has this configured deep learning VM in the background. AI platform, again, we talked about you being able to bring your own models to train on AI platform where you don't have to manage that infrastructure, manage the scale. We've taken that one step further, and you can actually use built-in models within AI platform. So you can bring your own model, use a built-in model. And when I say AI platform training, some of you may be familiar with the term cloud machine learning engine. Same thing, renamed. Um, but one difference I will note is we now have the ability to bring a custom container to AI platform training. So say you don't have an SKLearn, XGBoost, TensorFlow model, no worries, custom container, 
any ML framework you want. So we've done a lot in the AI platform to open it up beyond TensorFlow to um, other frameworks that are out there, which I see some people nodding like, yes, finally. <laughs> um, and then the third piece here is AI Hub. So how many of you have used TensorFlow Hub, TF Hub? A few, okay, great. So AI Hub, <laughs> I won't go into the analogy then. So AI Hub is essentially, you can think of as a catalog of all of the AI content that Google has put out. You can go in there and find all of our available APIs, all of our available AutoMLs, um, and even models and examples that our team, Google Brain, Professional Services Org has put out there. But there's also another side to AI Hub, and that's an internal version of AI Hub for you and your organization. So you have built an end-to-end -end ML pipeline, but I don't work on your team, but I want to build on what your team's doing. Great, I can go and pull this from AI Hub and use the pieces that make sense to use and then add on to that. So I've then saved time from not having to start completely from scratch um, and also learned from a colleague. So this is in the context of pipelines, notebooks, models, um, and expanding on that in the future as well. Um, we sort of talked about the uh, deep learning VM before, but just to go into a little bit more detail, um, fast prototyping. So in machine learning, the one thing I think we can all agree on is fail fast and fail often. Um, and this helps you get started so you can fail even faster. Um, the second point is you have access to all the accelerators you could want um, on your instance in a single click. So whether that's CPU, GPU, TPU, that is all available. Um, and the performance is optimized for Google Cloud. So you don't have to worry about the infrastructure and, and that piece there. And flexibility, as I've said before, choose between all the ML frameworks you would like. So this is um, kind of taking that one step further and giving an example of a fully managed notebook with this configured environment. So this is an example of using AI platform notebooks, um, as you can see here. And then you can even have your deep learning VMs there in the background. So you're just seeing it as your project um, in Google Cloud Platform, but your configured environments that supports um, your data science workflow is already there. And the icons, <laughs> in case you couldn't read before. Um, all right, so built-in models in AI platform. Um, I mentioned this before, but this has everything that came along with what was previously known as Cloud Machine Learning Engine, now AI platform training. You've got integrated hyperparameter tuning. Um, you've got support for popular algorithms, and this is you know XGBoost, Linear Learner, Wide and Deep Learner. Um, again, discoverable in AI Hub. So AI Hub is kind of like where you go if you don't know where to start. That's where you go. <laughs> it, it'll link you back to Google Cloud Platform um, in, in the right way. So you can't get lost if you just go to AI Hub. Um, and then easy to add new algorithms as a container, as I mentioned before. So the serverless training via AI Platform. So let's say you've looked at Kubeflow, you really like Kubeflow, but it's too complicated as a data scientist um, to think about managing all of that. Great, just go straight to AI Platform. You're using Kubeflow underneath. So you're gonna train models without messing with the infrastructure. Again, support for all of the data science frameworks you could ever imagine, um, especially if you just upload your own Docker container. Um, you can leverage distributed training on the latest GPUs and TPUs to finish your jobs faster. So I say that sort of um, in italics because I think sometimes people are a little bit amazed that you can have this managed serverless training with distributed GPUs, but it is a possibility there. And then, again, we have automated hyperparameter tuning um, that comes along with this tool as well. And if you still are thinking, oh, maybe I do want to use core Kubeflow, um, you have on-premise training using Kubeflow. So, um, there is some infrastructure abstraction where Kubernetes can manage all of the underlying dependencies and resources, and you get that additional piece of being swappable and scalable. So you're sort of exchanging between the library of machine learning microservices um, to deploy your training and prediction jobs. And again, this is have it your way, Burger King, right? So run wherever you want, GCP, on-prem, whatever makes you happy, whatever makes the most business sense. 
And this is a screenshot of the Qflow interface. So this is um, an integration of TFX tools within Kubeflow to analyze your models for bias and drift. So it essentially lets you compare different model runs with just a couple clicks. You're going to be able to compare um, you know, your ROC curve um, and different configs and parameters right there and also see the differences within each of the model runs. So you're not just kind of trying to guess and remember, okay, well, what did I actually change with run number 2.3? I don't remember, but it's going to be there for you. And there's also um, a way to click out and to automatically go to TensorBoard for more metrics if you want. Um, a little bit more on this looking into your model behavior piece is on AI platform. Um, I believe someone before me talked about the what if tool, so I won't talk about that, but this is another tool because at Google we do things three different ways and they're all great. <laughs> so this is way number three, I guess. Um, so whenever you're training and serving predictions within AI platform, um, there is a way to kind of look into your neural nets and understand the behavior. So, you know, Understanding a model's behavior is critical because of these five reasons. One, you want to explain why an individual data point received that prediction. Why is my model performing this way? Oh, it's because of this little pesky data point. Um, and you're able to kind of see and debug that odd behavior from a model. Then you can refine a model or data collection process. Um, I think a lot of times we blame the model weights um, for a model's performance, but I think most often time it's the data, <laughs> even though we don't want to admit that because I think for most people is the most dreaded part of the job. <laughs> um, number four is verify that the model's behavior is acceptable, and I think this goes back to some of the earlier presentations and conversations. Um, it's such a simple point on a slide, but th that point could probably take months in discussion. <laughs> um, and then number five, present the gist of the model. So you're getting a little bit more insights. Um, here is an example of a chest x-ray. And you are seeing that, oh, there seems to be um, you know, something, a disease here on this chest x-ray that we've detected with the model. But if you zoom in and adjust the contrast, you're able to see that these are actually pin marks by the physician. So this is just a little glimpse into sort of the, I guess, like aha moments that you have in trying to modernize some common processes with machine learning. Um, could just be pen marks. Um, so having something to kind of double check this process that goes, that's gonna be a part of everyone's lives, I think, in several years. Um, we wouldn't want pen marks to determine whether or not I have chemotherapy, right? Um, so you want to have these extra layers of checks and balances there. Um, so when you are serving predictions on Cloud AI, ooh, okay, Cloud AI platform, um, <laughs> prediction service. This is a lot of, a lot of words. Um, and the acronyms don't really make sense, so I just keep repeating the same word. Um, you get a, an analysis with every single prediction. So you simply choose which explanation method you want to use when you set up the model. And then Cloud AI Platform Prediction Service will tell you on every prediction how much each feature affected the final result. So here's an example of analysis for individual examples or the whole entire model. Um, I won't go into specific details, but you get the idea. Um, more information is better. Um, on the right-hand side, that's actually when the data has been um, looked at in BigQuery. So I don't know how many of you are familiar with BigQuery, but it sort of speaks to how each of these tools are connected. You might then hand this off to a data analyst. So the whole life cycle is sewn together. And then, of course, what all the ML engineers care about is deploying your model with ease. So you're able to set up online endpoints for low latency predictions or get predictions for your batch. Um, you can deploy the models trained on Cloud AI Platform, either on-prem or on Google Cloud. So say you train the model on AI Platform, you decide, oh, I don't like Google anymore. Fine, take it wherever you want to go. Um, we don't lock you in. Um, but if you do decide to deploy on Cloud AI Platform Prediction Service, 
It scales automatically based on your traffic, and you have access to GPUs for faster predictions. This is a window inside what AI Hub looks like. So if you are a developer, kind of walking down the whole life cycle of a ML team, you can easily search for capabilities and with a one click access the REST API for our cloud APIs. And I don't know if someone has talked about this today, but we have out of the box APIs, no ML training, no data needed for things like vision, natural language, video, the list goes on. Um, but that's all can be found and located within AI Hub. And then if you want to take it a step further, say you really love the capabilities of the API, but it's not quite domain specific, that's when you move to AutoML, which can be found in AI Hub. Um, I won't dwell on this, because I think the presentation before did a good job talking about AutoML, but this sort of spans between the developer and the data scientist role. Um, I do want to take a moment, though, to talk about AutoML tables. So let's say that you are a data scientist, you're a data analyst, and you have looked at AI platform training and you think, okay, well, I don't want to start with a bare model. I've got really structured data. What else is out there that can sort of help me get to a deployable model faster? Well, we have something called AutoML tables, and I single it out because all of the other AutoMLs are for unstructured data. This is the only one for structured data, and it's guiding you through the end-to-end -end machine learning lifecycle of structured data. It's going to help you define your data schema and target, help you analyze your input features, and it's sort of meant to work best when you just give it really dirty data. Whenever you don't focus on cleaning this up, it's meant to understand how real data looks and sort of has these guardrails to help um, with that process. It has built-in UI for evaluating your model behavior and of course deploying your model to get predictions fairly simply. So I didn't want to go into too much detail, but I did decide to leave this slide in here because this, I think, is something anyone who deals with structured data struggles with. So AutoML tables will help you automate the future engineering for things like numbers, classes, strings, nested fields. And then it's resilient to or sort of provides guardrails for imbalanced data, missing values, outliers, highly correlated features, high cardinality features like IDs. So essentially think about it like your manager is over your shoulder watching you code, right? So you're getting this guidance. Um, automatically in this tool. So you're not just sort of making guesses. And then we have another tool within this whole AI platform suite of tools for data analysts, data scientists, machine learning engineers, and that's BigQuery machine learning. Again, this allows you to build models for structured data, but this lets you write machine learning models in SQL. Um, and the number of models available is expanding beyond linear and logistic regression. Things like matrix factorization um, is available. And then if you are a data analyst and you are really like interacting with your Looker interface or your Tableau interface, perfect. BigQuery ML can be your back end to that. Um, and you can go on as normal with your favorite UI. So just in summary, the last slide I had here is why AI platform? Why did I sort of go on a tangent from data analyst, data scientist, ML engineer, um, data engineer? Why, why is all of that important? It's because you want to make the most out of your existing infrastructure. So with AI platform, you can build on GCP, on-prem, without any overhead or compromise. So you can get started quickly um, with the infrastructure. You can also get AI to production faster. So whenever, whether you start from a quick start model, whether you start from AI Hub, an API, AutoML, tables, BigQuery, you're able to kind of look and see and spend the time where it makes the most sense. Like I don't want my data scientist doing something with structured data, if it can be easily done with AutoML tables. Let's use that those people for building something really more complicated. So it's about shaping the business in the way that gets you to production faster. And then third, accelerate AI adoption across your organization. So with AI Hub, 
you're sort of creating this um, log of everything you've been doing in a searchable format and a way that you can just with one click take that notebook and automatically open it up into AI platform with a deep learning VM in the background to get started quickly. Thank you. Thank you.